We're gonna start this series off with balancing flash exposure and how your camera settings affect flash. The first thing that you have to learn with flash photography is how your camera settings influence your flash. ISO and aperture have the same effect on flash as they do with ambient light. As you increase your ISO, you increase your camera's sensitivity to light. Therefore, any light, including flash, is going to get brighter as you increase it higher. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is modify my ISO over three shots. So we're gonna stay consistent for these three. All right, and first one we're starting at ISO 100. Now I'm gonna go up one full stop to ISO 200. And another full stop to ISO 400. As you increase your f-stop, you are decreasing the size of your aperture, you are decreasing the amount of light that can pass through your lens, and this applies to flash as well as ambient light. So as you increase that f-stop, your image, whether it's with flash or ambient light, is going to get darker. Great, all right, now I'm gonna go back down to ISO 100. We'll stay consistent for these, and I'm going to modify the aperture. We're starting at f4, going up to f5.6. going up to f8. So you can see as I increase the ISO, the image gets brighter, and you can see as I increase the f-stop, the image gets darker. Now, shutter speed is a little bit different. If you don't know, your camera has what's called a sync speed, a maximum shutter speed that your camera can sync up with flash. For most cameras, this is between 1 1 60th of a second and 1 250th of a second. When you are at or below your camera's maximum sync speed, the shutter speed will not affect the brightness of flash. This is because flash is a very fast pulse of light, and regardless of your shutter speed, that entire pulse of light is hitting the sensor. So even if you lengthen the shutter speed to a full second or two seconds, since the pulse of light stays the same, the brightness of the image will not be affected by that shutter speed change. There is a feature called high speed sync where you can exceed your camera's maximum sync speed and sync your flash with any shutter speed that you want. Um, and in that instance, the shutter speed will affect the brightness of your flash. But for now, as long as we're staying below the maximum sync speed, let's just talk about how standard sync works. Okay, so now I'm at 1 1 16th power, f5.6, 1 250th of a second, ISO 100. We're gonna take three shots and show how the shutter speed does not affect the image. So that's at 1 250th, that's at 1 200th, and even if we go down to 1 100th, there's no adjustment to our light. In addition to controlling the exposure value of flash with your camera settings, you also have control on the flash or the strobe itself. Pretty much every flash allows you to control the power by turning it up or down. You can also move the flash closer or further away, which will affect the intensity of the light hitting your subject. Moving the flash in closer will make the image brighter. Moving the flash further away will make it darker. In a controlled environment like a studio, I choose the camera settings that I want before I worry about the flash output. I choose a shutter speed like 1 200th of a second to help underexpose the light. I choose an ISO like 100 to minimize the grain and maximize the image quality. And then I choose an aperture I want based on the depth of field that I am looking for with a particular lens. So in terms of knowing when an image is properly exposed or properly balanced, there's a combination of rules as well as just personal taste. The standard goal is to accurately represent the colors and the tones of your subject. Some people merely take test shots and review the image and make adjustments from that image based on their personal taste. Some people look at the histogram to identify if their midtones are in the correct spot, which we'll do a separate video on. And other people use a light meter to make sure that their lights are dialed in perfectly to the values that they want, which is a great way to identify light ratios. Another thing we'll talk about later. The point is, there's multiple ways to do this and you just need to pick the one that works best for you. If you don't like working with a light meter, it's fine to just look at the back of your LCD and identify it. But if you want precision, maybe you choose a light meter instead. If you're interested on using a light meter, the basics of using a light meter with flash photography, then you can check out this video right up here. Once we've learned how to balance a single flash in an indoor environment, in a controlled environment, it's time to take that same principle outdoors. 
Thanks for watching guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I really hope that you learned something new about flash photography. I suggest going and practicing the concepts that you just learned, but if you feel that you've already got a good grasp on it, then go ahead and proceed to the next video, which you can find in the end screen or in the description below. If you're enjoying my channel and you want to see more, then please hit that subscribe button and click the bell if you'd like notifications for when I post new videos. Until next time, keep on shooting.